are you ready for an exciting road to Eurovision? Because I am. As you can see, I'm standing here in Rotterdam where the magic happened last year. And this year you can follow me on my journey to the next Eurovision city. You get to follow me on my fabulous road trip to Turin. Torino, la bella vita Italia. Each week I'm driving to a new city or place where Eurovision magic has happened. So what is my plan? I want to meet my lovely Eurovision family, talk to artists, visit special Eurovision places, and I want to find out what the fans think about this year's entries. But most of all, I just want to enjoy this wonderful trip. So this week we start in the vibrant city of Rotterdam, and this year without face masks. Hallelujah! My name is Krista. For many years I have been trying to find the answer to the question. What makes the Eurovision Song Contest such a special phenomenon? I thought I would crack the code when I participated myself in 2013, but I still want to know all about its magic. So this year my road to Eurovision continues. On the road to Turin I want to discover the fascinating stories behind the Eurovision Song Contest. Welcome to Krista's Road to Eurovision! I'm so curious to find out how the city of Rotterdam experienced this whole Eurovision circus. And there is one man who has all the answers to that. Dave Geensen. He was Rotterdam's project manager for Eurovision Song Contest. So now we're going to go and meet him. Dave, it's so great to see you again. And now you have to tell me everything. How have you survived Eurovision? And how did Rotterdam feel about the whole Eurovision circus? Well, uh, nice to have you back here in Rotterdam again, Krista. And uh, thank you for asking. Well, we're still here. The city's yeah. still here. <laughs> and uh, well, we enjoyed every second of it. Of course, uh, by all means, it was very challenging with the, the whole uh, yeah. pandemic situation coming up. Uh, but we handled that and we made the most out of it. I really think so too, you made a great Eurovision. But and how do the Rotterdammers uh, feel about Have you got any response? Oh from, yes, yeah. oh yes, yeah. And uh, before uh, Eurovision came to Rotterdam, we asked them, what are you expecting? And yeah. afterwards we have asked uh, the citizens as well as the entrepreneurs, how do you look back on it? And there's a, uh, a huge uh, amount of pride in the city. Yeah. People were so proud that their city was uh, seen by so many people across Europe. 183 million oh viewers. Oh God, yeah, but that's, on wow. TV. You never get that kind of marketing anywhere, so that's really something to be proud of. Yeah, and that was actually uh, uh, our main goal. We yeah. want to show the city to the world, yeah. uh, what our city looks like, yeah. um, and uh, in the way how we manage events such like this one and even super events uh, and how we do that and how we embrace it. Do you have more tourists now or can you see it any well, like, the, in that yeah, way? The effects, uh, well, yeah. um, the people who are responsible for attracting more events yeah. coming over to Ahoy, the venue where yeah. it all took place, um, for them it's a lot easier uh, to attract new events because they have like this uh, golden medal around yeah. their neck, a letter of approval. If, yeah. if you can do Eurovision during a pandemic, you can do anything. You can do anything. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that really ha it really helps on that field. So yeah. uh, we're uh, quite successful in attracting new uh, business. On the tourist side, that's also something you will hear every year. Yeah. When you host Eurovision, you will get loads of tourists. But well, the whole scenery uh, of the tourism has changed a bit, of course, since the pandemic. Uh, and we're still uh, 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 f uh, checking out the results on the long term. Yeah. yeah. So, be honest, if you could arrange it all again, would you do exactly the same way or would you do something differently? The project team has yeah. asked this question a yeah. lot of times uh, when we did the evaluation. And the answer was, differently, maybe, better, probably not. No, in all honesty, um, we drew up a plan before Eurovision came. Yeah. Then the pandemic hit us and we have uh, made some uh, adjustments. But at the end, um, we have delivered what we were planning to do. 
except for some outdoor activities, uh, but they were simply not uh, allowed uh, due to uh, corona restrictions. So, well, at the end, at bottom line, no, we are really happy uh, what we have done and how we have done it. But Torino, Torino, what about Italy and Turin? Have you been there helping them out a little? They, they can do it by themselves, of course. We have full confidence in them. Uh, but yes, there is contact. And we've, uh, I've been on the phone and uh, uh, teams uh, with them a lot of times. And uh, I've even been there uh, for the key exchange ceremony. Uh, I gave another presentation there and uh, share as many experience as we have here. Um, so yes, we have close contact, and, uh, but they'll, they'll be fine. They'll yeah, be I'm fine. sure they'll yeah. be fine. I'm really exciting to see how this year's Eurovision is going to look like. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much for your time, Dave. It was really great to see you. Great, thank you. <laughs> the first official Eurovision party took place in Barcelona and we were there to talk to some of the artists. Hello guys from Out TV. I'm Vladana and I will be representing Montenegro this year in Turin with song which I wrote in English and it's called Breathe. They will go away, they say in the clouds fall you keep the things you feel their smell just to make you I lost my mum due coronavirus and I wrote a song from that pain and I thought that my message should be shared with wider audience. The battle for the life is bigger than you know to act so selfishly is unforgivable. My song is a kind of a tribute to all those people who lost their lives. There are more than six million of it and um, I want those families to know that there are there is someone who shares uh, the feeling and the experience. Hello, I am Monica Liu and this year I'm representing Lithuania with my song Sentiments uh, and I'm going to be singing in Lithuanian language finally. <laughs> I just I connect way more deeper when I sing in my own language. I've been writing for many years in songs in English and different kind of different kind of styles and everything. But this time, when I write it in Eng in Lithuanian and I sing it, it, I just connect way way more deeply. I'm Ronela. I'm Ronela Hayati. I'm the Albanian representative this year in Eurovision. It's my first time in Eurovision. I'm singing a song called Secret. It's beauty, uh, beautiful, it's danceable, it's really difficult to sing it. And even when I uh, do the dance and the singing and it's getting more difficult, I don't know why I chose these songs, but anyway. And um, let's hope I still have secrets to share and reveal till Turin. We are representing Latvia. We started participating in Eurovision with a very serious message in mind, and uh, we're doing that in a very funny way. Instead of a car, all of my groceries are divided by weight and stored in glass jars. It's about loving each other, it's about sustainability, and it's about eating some pussy too, if you feel like it. The songs are really beautiful. I like a lot of them. I like, I like Spain. Oh, when I first saw uh, saw um, channel the Spanish entry. I was like, <laughs> oh my God, she does this, 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 and that, and that, and that. Like she's amazing. She's like a superstar. Each of us likes a different one. North Macedonia for me. Yeah, I really enjoy wolves and bananas. <laughs> I like Romania, I like uh, Great Britain. There are some, some artists, of course, that they stand out immediately. I mean, the voice of Sam Ryder. Excuse me, several times. I'm up in space now. 
Like, I mean, Alicia Keys, everybody talked to him. He's insanity. I would love to sing like him. I cannot. Finland, Netherlands. I would go with Lithuania, sentimental. Yeah, I like Italy's Brividi. It, I think it's a very beautiful song. Norway, great. The Grandma Banana song, very funny. Love that. Also, Austria, Lumix, um, Pia, yes. It's cute, no? I think. It's very cute, it's very Eurovision. I mean, it doesn't get any more Eurovision than that, <laughs> if you ask me. Like Italy, I like, uh, <laughs> I like me, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Lord, uh, hard rock, hallelujah. That's for me. Always, always. Hallelujah! We're not the smartest band, but we're a band. <laughs> As the official travel partner of the Eurovision Song Contest 2022 and their Travel Proud Certified Hotels, Booking is an inclusive experience provider for traveling. Every week we look into experiences from some fans or fellow travelers in Let's Get Booking! I'm Luca, I'm 21 years old and I'm a cultural heritage student. I think my best Eurovision uh, experience would be interviewing Krista Sigrids for a magazine. She's so nice, she's such a kind soul and so professional, so spontaneous as well. If I were to go on a holiday with an old contestant, that would definitely be, I think, Destiny from Malta from last year. She looks so much fun. Uh, and I don't know, she just seems like we would have a good time. I think my favourite Eurovision memory is seeing my friend crying over Duncan Lawrence winning. Uh, we were at her birthday and she asked us to buy her ticket for um, Eurovision in the Netherlands if Duncan would win. And then he did, and then she cried, and then I was really happy to see it, and then I paid for her ticket. So. So this year I'm going to go to Italy for the first time, so obviously I'm going to have so much pizza and I really hope to see one skin because they're, well, you know, really hot. I think what I like most about Italy is um, very original, the food, obviously, uh, but also as a cultural heritage student, uh, there's just so much to explore, there's so much ancient history and I think I would definitely like to uh, visit some museums for also my own uh, educational purposes. Okay, so I have two favourite Eurovision songs. My overall favourite one is definitely um, Origo by Papa Yoshi from Hungary in 2017. And my other favourite song uh, is definitely uh, Shum by Govan from Ukraine. And I actually really jammed to it on a anti-war demonstration in front of the Russian embassy uh, a few weeks ago. We all danced to it and it felt very powerful and I cried. My prediction for this year's winner is actually no one yet because I wanted to be surprised this year so I didn't listen to any of the songs. I know that sounds silly but I just want to be surprised. <laughs> Right now I'm gonna drive back to Ahoy to feel the vibe of last year, but also to speak to Twan van Nieuwenhuizen. And apparently he did his job so good that they asked him to come back to Italy this year and do the same job. Cool, right? It's Krista here. Yeah, yeah, I'm outside Ahoy Arena now. If you maybe could come and get me. Uh, no, Ahoy. Oh, what? Oh, you're not here. No. So, can you come to Utrecht? Oh, no, no worries. I'll be there. I I'll come there. Look around here. 
can it seriously be true that the Eurovision creators are hiding here in a business park? Okay, just give me a few more minutes to find one. But in the meantime, I will show you the conversation we had with Jamala. Take a look. For Eurovision winner for Ukraine, Jamala. Please support us. Please support Ukraine. We can't fight this evil alone. We're doing, we're doing, we're doing this fight, this battle, with the strongest army in the world. And it's really, it's really hard. And only together we can, we can win. When strangers are coming. They come to your house They kill you all inside We're not guilty Not guilty Of course, I would love to be here and to speak only about music, about love But unfortunately, the war ruined all these things Kharkiv, really nice city and destroyed they're destroyed completely. Mariupol, 90%. 400 people without water, without food, without any help. They're dying. And they are trying to go through this, uh, go, this uh, go through this uh, bombs. The uh, Russian army killed them. And it's really, I don't understand. I don't understand why. Why you, why they do this. We could be the future. With people free. To live a love, the happiest time. Our time. It's a fight for the freedom, equality, and democracy. It's nothing special in 21st century. It's in basic. But no. I even can find the words to explain how angry I am for all this situation, for this unfair, unfair terror, unfair bloody war. Eurovision is a huge community based on freedom, equality, and democracy. Today, Ukraine protects this value, not for only our country, for whole Europe. Without you, it will be so hard. Please stand with Ukraine. Be with Ukraine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Juan, I finally found you. It's so great to yeah. see you. I, I, I did not expect the Eurovision magic to happen here in Utrecht. No, it's all about glamour and magic and uh, yeah, but I'm glad you're here in Utrecht. Yeah, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. And wow, head of contest, the first thing I want to ask you is how was the experience from last year? Yeah, it was a really, really cool experience. I think we really succeed to produce, well, three, fabulous shows, I think, and uh, from my point of view, being head of contest, so uh, being in charge of all 40 delegations and realizing, help, helping them to realize their dreams and ambitions on stage, I think we succeed for almost all delegations perfectly fine. If, if you could do something in another way, would you change something or was it, did everything go the way you planned? Um, oh, that's a difficult question. Not, of course, not everything went. The, 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 fun, the funny thing is, you don't know what it is until you do it. Yeah, and that's, that's really, maybe it's for you as a singer the same, that 
of course you watched it as a child or yeah. with your family and then you think okay I'm gonna do this performance but yeah. once you've done the whole big big event and the way how it works with all the tight time schedules yeah. and everything it's it's something you can't compare with anything I, I no of course not and you have to experience yeah it. so yeah. that's that's for you as a performer for me as a TV producer it's the same uh, what I understood you've been asked to do this again now in Italy yeah I was. so now you have the experience and now how does this feel now then to be asked again that must feel amazing right it, it came as a big surprise um, and how did you react? Well, I said, I have to think about it, but I <laughs> knew in three seconds, of course, this is... Uh, Let me look, I'm quite busy yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, of course. No, so the, so it, it was great, and uh, then I uh, get to know more of the people from Rai, the Italian broadcaster, and uh, uh, also uh, did propose to bring uh, some of my Dutch colleagues as well. So one of them is here in the room. Yeah. Maxime is here, our <laughs> nice. contest producer. And uh, also Erwin, who is a very technical guy who knows everything about props and how yeah. things can can move in, in, in such a big set and such a big venue. Yeah, yeah but it must but feel great to bring your own team, uh, some Dutchies yeah. there, so yeah. it feels safe. Yeah. Uh, but but what's the difference then with working with the Italians? Does it go? Is it smooth? Is it everything going well? It is smooth. I, I think uh, overall we are like uh, a big, big pan of lasagna with yeah. some <laughs> Dutch cheese uh, yeah. on it. But uh, of course there are differences, and every cliche is true. So oh, yes, really? <laughs> we are very organized and strict, and the Italians are more. Well, let's see how yeah, it goes. Yeah, I can imagine. But uh, we do find each other, and we were in Turin uh, two weeks ago for nine days, worked together, but also decided, okay, let's have a proper dinner together, and yeah. uh, let's uh, getting to know each other a bit better. And uh, well, maybe there, maybe we had a glass or wine or two, maybe. <laughs> But can you tell us a little, how is the contest now going to look like in Italy? It's going to be very different from the Dutch. I can see you have some uh, notes here. It's Maybe I can <laughs> <laughs> read a little in this notebook. It's going to be uh, totally different. I think uh, Rai, uh, Italian broadcaster, yeah. chose a totally different concept than previous years. Oh, so we okay, had, that's interesting. We had this clean, uh, minimalistic Dutch design uh, look and feel of the stage. And, uh, well, the theme in Italy is uh, the sound of beauty, and it's yeah. very Italian beauty. So the green room has never been so green before, because it's going to look like an Italian garden. Oh. Yeah. So the green room is going to look like really a green Italian garden with hedges and oh. fountains and everything. Oh, but that sounds great. That sounds yeah. great. And, and, and the stage has this big, they call it the kinetic sun, because the sun is the power of Italy. Yeah. That's, that's, that, that, that's the story. And that consists of six arches uh, who uh, can turn in every position. And they, one side is an LED wall, other uh, side is uh, all kind of light fixtures are there. Hey, thank you so much for your time. This is really interesting. And good luck in Turin. Thank Maybe you. I'll meet you there then yes. later. That would be great. Thank you. Well, my Eurovision lovers, it's time to leave the Netherlands behind and explore my road to Eurovision. Join me next time. Do it!